Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. I've been sent this unit by One Leaf, and you can see it's their Find NV200 unit. I'm just going to show you a few pictures of me unboxing it. It's what you would get if you were to purchase one, what you expect to find in the box. You can see the unit's quite a large unit. Some nice big buttons on the top. You've all the kit you need to get going from the off. Here you can see with the first of the two battery compartments. When you open them up, it's a pair of the One Leaf. 18650 batteries flat on both ends as you see written and on the other side there's another battery compartment and that one's got just the one battery in with a little tab on all of them you pull out to get you going let the electricity flow and on the other side you see there's a load of connections hdmi and also a sd card and i've fitted the rangefinder to the top just to see how much it weighs and zoom in on this i'm not claiming this is the exact weight it's what it seemed to weigh on my scales. I don't know how accurate they are, but give you a bit of an idea. It won't be that far out. Which is why I guess they supply it with a nice neck strap and some really good hand grips so you can hold on to it securely. And here's a view of the dimensions, the length. You can see I've put a coffee cup to the end of the tape so I've got something to push it against. You can freeze frame this to read off whatever dimension you like, whether you're in metric or imperial. Give you an idea of the height. And I took it for the first day out. I was going to film in 4K. And there I am, sat waiting for squirrels to turn up. Nothing did on the day, except for this one at the side of the hide. Rather to my frustration, it's the wrong time of year. But I did take a guess at it. And I did film some stuff in 4K and then promptly realised that my video editing software doesn't recognise it for some reason. Luckily enough, I didn't waste my time filming in 4K anymore. So I took it out to another place that you'll recognise from previous videos and today I should be filming in full HD at 120 frames a second. You can see what I'm looking at. I'm hoping to do some video footage that I can slow down just to see how the slow-mo goes. I think normal television video goes at about 25 or 30 frames a second. Well, 120 frames a second I should be able to quarter it down and hopefully get a nice smooth slow-mo. You can see there's a few birds coming to the feeder. It's a lovely morning. It's a rare bright spot in the horrible weather we've been having so I decided to get out. It's a cool day, not cold really, and nice and sunny and very still too. And over here I've spotted a tail. I came out here yesterday with Bro. We checked the feeder and we could see there's been squirrel activity. So I decided to come out today because I always let the feeders tell me when to shoot in the hope of getting one or two on film. I decided to try and use the one leaf like a video camera. I've got it mounted on a tripod for reasons of video clarity. Every time I touch the thing, magnifies my movements no end. I'm pretty sure the squirrel's there somewhere. I do believe you can change the lenses. I think it's got a 50mm one in the moment. and I've got it on five times magnification. Like I said before, full HD, but 120 frames a second. So hopefully this one will come to the feeder and I'll knock it over and we can see what we get. It's not really meant for this, I don't think. I do think if you wanted to do any wildlife filming with it, you would need a tripod. Most definitely you would. This flea bag took its sweet time. This tree blew down in a storm several years ago. I've left it there. Still alive. I've trimmed a few branches off of it, but most of it I've left alone. Just so I can see any squirrels run up it. Very often they jump across to the tree from there. But there is another branch going that way. 
let's run across that one I put that other branch there deliberately to hopefully get European buzzards to sit on it I've had them in the wood before now here we go I'll stop touching the NV200 and turn my attention to picking up my rifle which is my FAC Theoban Rapid wait for the shot you might have just seen the pellet on the bottom of the screen there it drops to the ground nicely see the blood pumping out of the hole where there's some orifice or other good kill this one didn't move much here we go in slow-mo see what you think of this I'll drop this to 0.25 of original speed so it's a quarter of 120 it's actually about 30 frames quite impressed with that I think I'll take a few screenshots of that and have a look three frames before impact you can see the pellet streaking across the screen there in a circle and then the next frame you can just about make out a pellet and this is the frame just before impact you can see it streaking away hit him in the top of the head so not bad my FAC is in 0 0.20 caliber and it's flying about the speed of a 177 pellet so I imagine with a slower 2.2 which I might have to try at some point you probably get a better pellet track here comes victim number two I won't bother speeding any of these up I'll just let you see the process of me trying to film it I'm trying to move it as carefully as I can on my tripod but I have the same trouble with my normal camera obviously a bit distressed by the one on the ground but not that distressed he doesn't want his breakfast or she for that matter I'm not sure which one this was you can see me moving well actually not see me you can hear me creaking on my chair as I'm moving around go on son you know where it is I don't like it when they do that when they turn around I normally put a little pile of wheat on the ledge usually gets a few birds in and a lot of the time they just turn up and munch on that it's right by his there we go he's found it get ready for the shot now I'm tracking him with a rifle and there's the shot another good one then into the ground there's a link in the description to tell you why they kick perfectly good headshot that was is slow-mo I think that's rather good victim number three has come in caught me unawares drinking a cup of tea I do believe let's see what this one does it's going to eat some spilt wheat in fact I threw a little bit on the ground This is always a problem. It seems to be these days they don't want to come to the feeder so often. Doesn't help matter that I sprinkled a bit on the ground. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. It's going to play me up a bit. I go for a headshot in a second decide to take him on the ground and promptly miss well, I think the head movement caught me though I'm not sure I haven't hit it at all I thought I clipped it but I haven't you can't see off camera it's run around the back of the tree and it's stood there and it's looking back over at me so I obviously haven't caught it I did now sat about 20 yards behind the tree I hit it straight in the front of the face 
So that's number three down. This is the final victim of the day. And also one of the most interesting bits of footage. You can see he's on alert. I'm not actually touching anything at the moment. I've left the NV200 trained on him. And I know it's him. I'll tell you why in a minute. As you see what it does. Do another squirrel on the ground. Sometimes I just wait. I won't move for the rifle until I'm pretty confident that they haven't really seen me. But I think this one's attention's on the ground. I'll let this play out in its entirety. So I'm in a good look at the moment and I did wonder whether it was going to leg it or whether it's just going to feed. It hasn't passed by the hopper yet. I think it's eyeballing them waiting to see any movement. It can't bear it any longer. It's going to have to go and investigate. See it's sort of stretching forward so it can retract back really quickly. It's one of the worst times to try and shoot a squirrel when it's like that. You can sometimes get them and you can sometimes miss them. I prefer them to sit hunched up feeding. The neck's all retracted, they can't retract it any further. And here we go, this is the footage. We've seen this type of behaviour before. We get one squirrel rag on another one. Seems to be crunching quite hard on the leg on the one on the ground. I can tell you now the one that's doing the crunching is a boar, and the one on the ground, the dead one, is a sow. So I would have naturally assumed beforehand this was male on male aggression, but it's not. Quite violent on the back leg. I thought it was actually eating it at first, but it doesn't appear to be. I do wonder what's driving this behaviour. If anyone can suggest in the comments why this may be the case, or, or even knows why it's the case, please inform me. I would love to know. Like I said before, now we've always assumed male on male aggression. So it did look like it was being physically eaten, the dead one which I thought was just mental. I wonder if I'm seeing something completely new here. The Hannibal Lecter of squirrels. Didn't appear to be eaten when I picked it up though. Very strange behaviour. Back to the back leg again. Looked a bit rough for mating behaviour. You never know how squirrels carry on in that regard. Could be like ducks. They pretty much rape the females. Just checking the other two out. I do believe one's a boar and one's a sow, if I remember rightly. I'll have to double check my records. I keep a diary of times when squirrels turn up and times of year and locations, you'd be surprised how that can be a good guide. Not 100%, but it's better than nothing. Hurry up, will you, fella? I want to shoot you now. There we go. In the right direction, finally. There we go. I'm moving over to the rifle now, which is pretty much propped in a ready-to-go position. I've only come out to really film with the one leaf today. I'll line up on, take the shot. And for some reason there's no pellet. Whether I've left an empty space, I don't know. 
didn't put him off. My heart did drop when I misfired. Well, dry fired even. I'm not sure what's happening there. Maybe that magazine might need a bit of love and attention. But all was well in the end. Here's the slow mo with the actual shot. And here we go. And there's a cheeky four on the ground. Better than I'd hoped for. There's the one that was ragging on the other one. It's the male, the female. So in the ball, there's my rifle, and that's the pellets I was launching. And there's a picture with the one leaf. Quite pleased with the day out. There's a little bit of night vision footage I was getting. Went out for a go at a place we go shooting squirrels, but I went to the actual farmyard with Bro last night. Did a bit of shooting. And I wanted to test in the real world what it looked like. And there is some ambient light there. This one's some hay bales. I'm actually sat 15 yards from this. I paced it out because I just want my rifles on range 4. I've got the 177 Rapid with me. I've just cut the video down. That one kept popping in there. There's some wheat in there. I thought there might be some rats if I put a bit of wheat in the bales. And I managed to whack that one. It's quite a small one as you can see. We thought there was a lot more here. So I brought the one leaf out just to see how it would go. Again, it's in the tripod. About to take the lens cap off for the IR. These, these two rats about 20 yards away filming them from a distance I can't remember if it was 20 yards actually thinking about it because the moment I stepped forward closer the house was by me the PIR light came on it disappeared off I'm not sure what this little one's up to I'll leave it up to your imagination. And that's the point they disappeared off on the PR light, come on. There's some rabbits. Guess where they are? I try clicking my fingers first and I blow them a kiss. And obviously the kiss noise is always the way you should go with rabbits. Force of habit clicking my fingers. I think that was about 30 40 yards away. There's several out there in the long grass. I'm sat up against the fence. I'm trying to reposition the tripod. There we go. A bit more kissy noises. Up he comes again. It's not been an exhaustive test, but I tested what I wanted to test on it. I'll hopefully try and find out why the 4K doesn't work. I think it might be my power director. It might be so out of date it might not work properly on it, or it might be a setting I've done. But I'll have to look into that. But uh, I'll put some links in the description to other people and their reviews of this device decent device quite large could have done with a better bag like more padding but i like it seems to work well let me know in the comments what you all think thank you for watching if you like this video please like subscribe and share thank you